Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Now you're back in Toronto, so yeah, I'm busy. just like that, just like that. Yeah. Busy 24 hours for you guys. Yeah, I'm in, I'm East, I'm in East Van. I'm totally oh, good. you're in East Van. I should have known by the sign right behind oh, yeah. you, right? No, no. We're all we're all good in the hood. That was right. lovely. I didn't have to go far even last night. Yeah, I stayed nice. in East Van. That was even better. Well, hey, <laughs> good. Did you um? You didn't go last night, right? We didn't miss you. No. No, okay. you didn't miss me. Okay. Um, I wasn't actually at the event last night. So no, no, it's it's cool. I I um I heard it was a sellout, so that's fantastic. It, it, was, it was it fabulous. was a sellout. And then the the bad thing is we we know faces and we're really bad at names. It was um, one of us more than the other. So like last night was like it's like the worst possible scenario because you like all like so many people have been on the podcast and you realize I kind of sort of know who, and then I yeah. kind of sort of don't. And then, so like, I would run back and forth and go, that guy, his name is, if you see me. And then know. Kenny's like, I've forgotten already. I'm like, no, you have to, it's, like, I remember. Yeah. So you can't forget. It's out of right? context like, too. Yeah. It's uh, it's like trade shows whenever you're standing at your booth and everyone's yeah. like, hey, and you're like, oh you're like, no. Hi. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you. I'm like, oh. you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you. you. I know. I always say that. I I do say hey you, but I've naturally say that even to friends and family. But uh, I've always said I can't wait to get to that point in life where you can use all the terms of endearment. But uh, I I don't. It's, I'm still not at that age where I can say thanks, dear. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. That uh, I always say. Those are my uh, my grandmother used to say that, and I'd be like, I can't wait to get there because I'm horrible at names as well. So I know what you're talking about. Oh my it's gosh, hard, right? it's true. It's we, saw one of, we saw one person yesterday from behind and I told him, I said, I know that's her. He goes, no, it's not her. It's, I'm positive it's her. And I don't, I'm the one, I'm brutal. Yeah. I, I, I forget everything, like seriously. Yeah. And we finally went up and, and then we I kind of, we told her later, so listen, if you're going to come to events, you got to come in the baseball cap or don't bother. Because uh, <laughs> with all the baseball I, cap, I don't know who the hell you are. Cap. So I was like, that can't be her. Like one, she's not wearing a hat. And then two is, I don't know what she looks like without a hat on, right? Yeah. Like this, you know. Yeah. yeah but it, well, it I've definitely it. added uh, confusion over the years. I know the store staff always say that because when I've done trainings, they're like, oh, Cheryl's a brunette. No, she's a blonde. She's redhead. Her hair's short. It's long. It's like, well, that's always been one of my things, right? So I add confusion to the fact that, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's like the ball hat. It's like you don't expect someone to have almost black hair one day and the next time you see them, they're platinum blonde. So oh, I think uh, that's okay. I think that's your ability to screw with people is it's an yeah. entirely different skill. So I think you should just do it. You know, I mean, why yeah. not? Because especially it's, the last couple of years, it's all a virtual world. None of us know. We, we've gone to people and, you yeah. know, look that thing. Shit, I didn't know you were like six eight. You were like yeah. the same size as me on the pod on the podcast or on the virtual on the exactly. Zoom call. What happened? That's a, always uh, one of the first comments because I'm 5'10 and my brother, who is my business partner, is 6'5. So everyone's like, whoa, we didn't realize you guys are so tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> While sitting down, so, we're almost the same I height. know. It's like yeah. you're all Zoom, right? So we're all on Zoom. It's harder to harder to know. And that's why I say at events, trade shows, things like that, you really get to start to to know everyone. So next yeah. time I see you at a trade show, I'll come up and do the – and see if you, you can call well, out hey, my name. You. <laughs> Especially you. How are Phil, you? Now that How's I know it it's you. I know I'm going to totally stalk Phil at the next trade show just to see if he remembers. He'll be like, but you were blonde last time. I would love that. I would love if you screwed with people. I I think we're we're both shit to servers. I I think that's awesome. I I would love that. Why not? Yeah, I'm I'm putting it in my calendar for March. We have some fun with it. Well, he'll be back. Yeah, like, that's that. that's like, my note. Put, put down put in my calendar for CHFA now. He'll be in, back uh, at CHFA. That's I know. What he'll do. That's why I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I accomplish that over the weekend. Exactly. <laughs> cut the hair. Color it. Yeah. Cut it. Color it. Just go, go, go. Uh, yeah. No. Hey, listen. It's like October, <laughs> so you have time. You can. <laughs> but you don't now because now I know what you're thinking about doing. 
No, who now you're gonna have to up. I don't have any hair, hair, so yeah. I, like I, I don't have any hair, and I can't grow facial hair, so it's kind of <laughs> limited what I could do to screw around with. Oh, uh, I think you could do things for sure. So there's always a way. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a way to have some fun to screw with people. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. We, we're excited to do this. Thank you for moving the time. We yeah, really my pleasure. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to get a chance to land at least, right? <clears throat> yeah. 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 yeah yeah and then um I, so i do have the afternoon sun though catching a building right now so where are you cheryl are you in town? i'm actually yeah. yeah i am in vancouver i'm in the okay. downtown so oh, okay, yeah i was cool. down down here for meeting so i just popped into a room and oh, okay, like i said okay. the sun is reflecting off a building on oh. me right now but uh, yeah it. i'm Take i'm it. based in i'm based in vancouver i'm a bc born and and uh bred and we continue yeah, to okay. to keep the company that way too so awesome yeah awesome. okay and then so Cheryl think... came to us via yeah. linda like the boss yeah. actually recommended that you have to have her on you because i think we did something with aaron and chfa we were talking about the save our supplements and you know all this kerfuffle and i think the boss came at us and like when when the boss tells us what to do we actually we actually <laughs> do listen i think we're scared of her more than anything but we actually do listen to her so that's why we got you on so yeah. cheryl grants on today you're the owner operator CEO of Vitality Products. Yeah, I'm president and CEO of Vitality Vitamins yeah. and Supplements. And awesome. Yeah, that I'm very pleased that Linda turns your arm to get me on today. Pretty she easy. She doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> Linda she just, just has says, to say it and we just do, do it. it. Boys. That's it. Like, so this that's is who you're at. Okay, I can't, that's stuff. fine. We're, we're going to find yeah. her. Yeah. Didn't want to get into any more trouble than I normally get into. So we yeah. did that. So what I think what we're hoping for you from you in the next 45 minutes to an hour is. Yeah. First off, really, you know, who you are, your story, how yeah. you ended up in supplements and vitamins, what the company's about, et cetera. And then, um, yeah, maybe your take on, because you've been around for a while, according to Linda. So, like, do you, you were part of the original NPN when we went from DINs to NPNs? Were you I do part have, of that? I, some? So, my, my brother was involved in some of that, and I know quite a bit of the history of it. Okay. And um, that's probably also why I've been called on uh by chfa um exactly. i've been very involved in the regulatory speaking on behalf of the industry as one of the only women manufacturers so i can definitely talk about that transition and and what that meant to the industry and continues to so uh, let's, let's go down ones. that path yeah um, and then if we even want to take it down because we don't have to do strictly sos etc is yeah. you know on some of your other takes maybe even where you think this is all going to go forget the the legislation the categories the yeah. the yeah. whole idea of itself i mean yeah. where are we going yeah for so sure. anyway, that's really it. I mean, so we'll interject awesome. uh, when we think of something. Otherwise, we're unscripted. It's pretty much a coffee talk, coffee shop talk. And yeah. That's it. So. You, can, you can tell I'm limited in my my discussion abilities. <laughs> About the same as us, right? We don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've already had a really nice discussion. So I, I, think, I think I'm really loving this. Great. So I'm like Linda's, you know, Linda's known me over the years and uh, I, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people have started to get to really know me in the last uh, year and a half um, throughout the industry because of the uh, SOS. But right. um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I'm happy to chat on all, all kinds of levels. Well, you know what? You're going to run it. this thing. You can start just again, yeah. who you are right, and what you do really. and all that stuff. And literally, right. we'll just interject when something Perfect. clicks in our little heads. Fantastic. Well, yeah, um, Cheryl Grant, uh, president of Vitality Vitamins and Supplements, and you know, proud to be one of the few female manufacturers of vitamins and supplements in Canada. I, you know, I continue to talk about that because I think it's really important that we represent um, more women and uh, women in the manufacturing side of um, health products that are purchased sure. primarily by that that category. I would say we're the 80% minority um, because that's really the percentage of people who are buying vitamins and supplements in the natural health food stores and even the <clears> staff <throat> of the supplements tend that way, but there's very very few of us who are who are really um, right there from the ground level of, of uh, formulating and and producing those products. So, um, yeah, we like I said, 
I came into the vitamins and supplements side actually quite naturally. Um, I was born into it in a sense. My my family was involved in in uh, the natural health industry when I was a child, and so my brothers and I used to play in the warehouses, and you know our parents were involved in building the businesses, and and of course as you grow up you kind of find your own route and way. And um, I actually moved my after I completed university, uh, went into um, really marketing and communications. So I worked for some pretty large companies, not in the natural health space, um, although I did at one point and was working with Canadian Diabetes Association. But mm-hmm. um, I've always stayed within the natural health uh, world um, on a personal level. Um, and then my actually really got very involved about 10 years ago. We went through a family health crisis and unfortunately we lost our father. And it, uh, you know, going through losing a family member, you really realize how terrified you are, um, the emotional impact that has. And, you know, we really listened heavily to the doctors and I feel like we lost our roots. And that was kind of uh, the spark of a conversation between my eldest brother and I. And and we really, you know, took steps at to what, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve and kind of build a legacy a- around health and, and returning to that. So, um, you know, we revitalized the name Vitality and, and brought four products initially into the marketplace. Um, um, and, and we focused on our backyard here in Vancouver. So, you know, the traditional story of building a business is door knocking. Um, you know, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's literally going from one person to the next and establishing those relationships. And, you know, we we um, we met with a distributor, a local distributor. I didn't want a national one. And, and uh, we started talking with retailers. I literally went out and, you know, I even just only had diagrams at the time. I didn't even have bottles in hand, but just sketches of what we thought the products would look like, the formulations, the why are we doing this? And, uh, you know, I was introduced to Sheila, who uh, was at Choices at the time. And I showed her the formulations and, and the, the design idea. And she said, you know, Cheryl, you've punched holes into a shelf that we didn't know we needed these products and uh, I think you've got something here and so that was really the start of our our journey and then going and our first store being Nature's Fair um, always have to give a shout out to Nature's Fair because when you say you're local and you believe in independence like yeah. you know make sure that's your priority you know really really supporting those initial brands because they are the innovators. Um, They're the people who have ideas and they're also the most cash strapped. So um, I I really, you know, I just want to say like, that's, that's a big part of the industry. When we talk about the natural health industry, I've listened to others on your shows talking about how the trade shows have changed from like, you know, these small intimate to 25 years ago, even 10 years ago to now these massive trade shows and challenging to meet people. So that one-on-one really, really made, made a difference. And then, um, you know, we did go national a couple of years after we kind of started building across Canada, or I should say lower mainland BC into Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, you know, the the traditional um, build build your backyard. And we launched our fifth product, which was um, really has become our, what I always call our lion, which is power iron. And power iron um, caught the attention of key accounts, even uh, Nature's Emporium, um, and again, you know, the power of the natural health retailers who really know um, the marketplace, uh, know what customer trends are. They see that. And uh, Teresa um, uh, is the first person we talked to at Nature's Emporium. And she said, Cheryl, we need this brand. And that is so validating when the retailers are aware of what's on their shelf, what are opportunities. And then that was kind of really our, our really growth forward from there was bringing in our fifth product um, and continuing to build out across Canada at that point. What was the time frame of this again, Cheryl? So like when did you, the, the Nature's Fair Choices, you said it was 13 years ago or? I... No, that one was 10 years, almost 10 years ago okay. now. So uh, we actually launched, uh, we went and met with retailers um, and we started getting in our initial orders. And then our first products were actually shipped. I remember dropping the first box off, driving up to the back gate of uh, what is now Horizon Distributors at the time. It was Christmas, Christmas. but I had my back seat of the car, one box with our product of our Woo-hoo! first initial order. And you're like pulling up to these huge loading bays with these massive trucks. And you're like in your little, you know, Honda, like, here you go. Yeah. Here's, Here's my, my first box. box. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And uh, yeah, it was a painful, painful beginning. Um, you know, again, building into the stores one by one, you got to build that trust. You got to, you got to build the turn. So that's why I say that's literally, uh, that was 20, uh, 2013 um, that we really, like I said, we started in. Um, and then, yeah, 10 years later, coming up next month, basically, um, you know, we're sold across Canada, um, as well as we've now started selling into the United States as well. Good for you. So a quick one or two, because I'm, I'm curious. So when you said the folks were involved or like you came to a national, like what did, what did the folks do? Like, what did your parents do? Yeah. So our, my, my dad actually was, so he came from a CPG background. He was actually involved in um, quite high management roles initially in um, uh, Procter and Gamble, uh, Kraft Foods, uh, Nabob, uh, people know that as a coffee company. Yeah. And uh, he um, actually started up with a group of friends into vitamins and supplements and actually purchased into some other um, natural health uh, uh, companies around food. And so it's kind of funny because uh, one woman at a trade show once said to me, I know, I know who you are, like you're part of this, this family. But uh, there's a misconception that, you know, I had those relationships or the brand um, has existed for a long time. It was, you know, zero dollars in sales, zero stores. Um, but that's why I said we we grew up in natural health around vitamins and supplements right. and going to the natural health food stores. And that's why one woman, when she asked me about the history, she said, I didn't realize the baton had been been passed in a sense that, you know, the the journey continues through the next generation. And, and so, you know, you know, my dad was very visionary, like he really, you know, I actually have a magazine from the 80s that, you know, the future is the bean, like, you know, vegan and vegetarian lifestyle. So, you know, really grew up around that idea of like, you know, nutritional labels didn't exist. Uh, you know, and that was my dad said that, you know, the future is nutrition labels, the future is understanding what's in your food. Um, so that was a really big part of our, our growing up and our experience was around natural health. I always joke, my grandmother was Norwegian. Oof. We used to have cod liver oil mixed in with thick milk and you drank mm, that down tasty. because, you know, yeah. Well, and now, you know, the kids get it and it's it's omegas for brain development. So these, yeah. are, these are all coming back. And so when we even started building out the Vitality line, um, I really started digging back in historic formulations and notes from, um, you know, uh, master herbalist around cramp bark and I learned all about cramp bark and we put that into one of our products and so that's why I say like we you know I saw that journey and I watched as well um, you know my dad was very involved um, in terms of regulatory as well he was a very big speaker about the importance of the natural health industry and providing those solutions um, for people's health and that's that's really a driver for me you know I, I really whenever I think about anything people say to me why are you so passionate about supplements why are you so passionate about the health industry and it goes back to the why why did I start in this journey and I like I had a, a passion from a childhood um, but it was also like I said I, I had a real why why did we step away from our roots when our dad was unwell I wish I had thought about the things that I know now and when my mom went through almost a very similar health crisis I had that knowledge back in my hands and we worked on healing your body through natural solutions and mm -hmm. working with both the medical and the natural world. And my mom is in now fantastic health. And I, and I, if no matter whatever happens to vitality, like that journey alone, it was right. worth it all. Um, but that's why I say like, for me, like, you know, really digging into the ingredients, seeing how they can change people's lives. Um, and that's really important. Like I say, one of our products that actually just won an Alive Award, the Vitality Magnesium and Chamomile for Kids, that actually started for my niece again, uh, was having stress and sleep problems. So people always say, where do you guys get ideas from? What's missing in the marketplace? And I go back to what I started at the beginning, female manufacturer, we're serving the 80% minority, which is really the female buyer. Exactly. Um, and that's from a book I read years ago. And it's true, we need to really focus on building the market for women. Um, and that's also why I'm very passionate um, about the regulations that are coming into play right now um, around the save our supplements um you know my family was involved in this my dad many years ago during a transition and now um you know i sort of have stepped forward i, I called aaron the president of canadian health food association a few months back probably about a year ago now and i said where are the women <laughs> so he's like well then join us in Ottawa. Join us. so yeah 
And, and that's part of what has to start happening in the industry is, you know, um, I love the fact that the uh, MPs are being overwhelmed by um, postcards. You know, I was in Ontario for Canadian Health Food Association show uh, last mm-hmm. month and a woman actually came and knocked on my window while I was outside of one of the goodness me locations. I was going in for a store trip and she said, I need you to sign. They're trying to change the regulations in Canada against health food supplements. Do you know anything about it? And I was more interested in her. I said, I, I'm very aware of uh, some of the proposed changes, but I want to know how did you get involved in this? And I think that that's really another one of our strengths of the, uh, the industry is that care and understanding and so those are all the things that kind of we bring into vitality and why I'm so passionate about what we do. I think that's one thing people don't really understand with it. I've had discussions with friends who aren't in this space who will typically go down more or less the same paths where it's well the only reason everybody's up in arms is because it's business 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 and I you know and I always digress and listen I mean because I came from you know London Drugs he came from J&J so we've done the the Mm. other side as well as I said, you know, no, this one's not really, it's got nothing to do with the devil on that side. It's the fact that they're trying to take away you know, a solid livelihood of hundreds of thousands of people who work in this industry, not big corporations. There's very few big corporations really in our space to some, yeah. to, to the most degree. I mean, for the most part, it's a lot of smaller companies mm-hmm. and you're, you're really starting to hurt or hit personally. Like really and truly person, it's not like someone going after Johnson and Johnson or Pfizer, where they're just shells of a lot of people who are making a living, but it's like shareholder shit. It's all this other nonsense. Mm-hmm. This is this becomes really personal. This impacts all of us and our ability to just well, you'll tell us more in a second, but to, to be able to make our own decisions on our health by adding natural supplementation into a world of pharmacy, which is fine. They can work in tandem, they're lovely together yeah. most times. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I 100% agree. Like the, you know, one of the reasons I know Linda suggested that, you know, you guys uh, bring me on today was around the Save Our Supplements campaign. Cool. And and uh, the, it's very important that people are hearing that it's it really takes every individual to be involved in this because the reason that the Save Our Supplements campaign is so vital is the majority of the natural health products we have you know, you're talking about companies like a Vitality. Um, you talked about the fact that you had some other smaller companies on the show recently too. Yeah. Um, those type of companies won't exist. Those products might not exist. And, you know, I was um, asked to uh, uh, speak about that um, in Ottawa in June. And so we were in the press gallery in Ottawa on Parliament Hill. And, um, you know, I was asked to share my story. And one of the things that people don't realize is what, cost recovery looks like is including bringing forward new products, licensing fees. So I talk about that innovation, those ideas, because you see it in your own world. You see like, hey, a lot of my friends are suffering from iron deficiency. Why is that? So we really get holistic and focus on the body. What's missing in these products? How do we make them different? Same thing with the magnesium and chamomile and then realizing how many children have stress and sleep and that really accelerated again with, you know, COVID and social media and all these things. So you start looking, where's the innovation? coming from when you talk about the larger companies how are they growing their sales they actually start buying out the smaller companies exactly. that come with innovation and yeah. you know um mm-hmm. we talk about the first four products that doug and i launched into the marketplace my brother and for us to come into the marketplace under what cost recovery would look like is basically all four of those products would fall under the highest class um, registration which means we would have had to put down without ever knowing if we could sell a product in the marketplace over 200 thousand dollars just for the license fees from the government yeah exactly Phil I can see your face going what so people don't understand what does that do so a company like Vitality if we were to you know come forward now would I manufacture and put two hundred thousand dollars into just licensing fees and a hope and a prayer and I may not even get that license I would be better to take that money and go into the United States manufacture in the United States spend two hundred thousand dollars on marketing and sales and inventory because I would be more likely to to I would be ahead because the FDA it's a registration notification Um, and so we already have 
some of the best regulations in the world. Um, and that's one of the things that people should know about is Canada has gone through multiple variations of the natural health products from being what I'm going to call fairly unregulated um, historically back in the 70s and 80s and so forth. Um, a lot more food focused, though. You have to remember back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of them were around herbs. Um, they were tinctures, mm -hmm. things of this nature. And then mm -hmm. you start getting into um, some of the other formulations really starting in the 80s, sort of those um, synthetics, higher degrees. So that's when the DINs and so forth came in, the drug identification yeah. numbers. And then we have the, the move to the NPN system. And the NPNs really recognize that natural health products are exactly that. They're natural um, and that they're beneficial beneficiary to the body. They're supplementing. So supplementing food. We saw that in COVID. The first thing people did is, you know, we went running to the natural health food stores. I need, I've never had a company ever call me a store, say, Cheryl, do you have vitamin C? Um, and then here we are. COVID we couldn't hits. sell vitamin C if our I life know, depended like, on it. All of a sudden I, the whole world wanted it. <laughs> if I never walked into a store and said, I have a vitamin C for you, they would have laughed me right out the door. Yeah, um, exactly. But, you know, and that's, that was COVID. That was, you know, and I, and I've talked about that with MPs and their staff, um, members of parliament. And they're just like, yeah, you're right. My family did the same thing. We were like, we need zinc. We need elderberry. We need, um, you know, our, our children are stressed out. We need um, sleep products. We, you know, well, we were going for adaptogens at Canadian. We were running and she tried to get, because we knew the pharmaceutical side yeah. wasn't going to necessarily do what we wanted it to do. So I yeah. think we were looking for alternatives or supplementation yeah. to a pharmaceutical that we may have been using or taking, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly what the natural products are, is it's supplementing your your base, your good foods, your diets. It's not surprising the majority of people who are buying supplements are also those who take the highest care of their health. So, you know, that's why I say it is an, an attack when we hear um, Health Canada is creating all these regulations on Canadian-made products from, you know, the idea of a, a putting forward a new license products so the 10 products or we actually have 13 products in the marketplace again I said this on Parliament um, Hill uh, over seven hundred thousand dollars seven hundred thousand dollars to get the licensing and it, it's not feasible I wouldn't be here today with you guys talking right. um, you know we talk about capital raising as a female I have raised some capital for us and we're receiving less than four percent of it's all of the up. capital it's for just sure. crazy it's, it's, and that's why so how does a, someone come in an entrant come into this marketplace under cost recovery with licensing fees they're exclusionary and that's why they really will lead to just the larger companies pharmaceuticals and the other thing that will happen is the costs get passed on to the consumer. Okay, so right. we're already watching under the last couple of years the, the conditions of cost increasing, inflation. It Basically what you're going to see is a reduction of product because it becomes cost prohibitive for people to be producing yeah. and marketing them, which means now you won't have access to the products you've always had. Um, that means companies that are smaller won't have the same stamina to be paying for their annual, mar like there's an annual fee. One of the other companies spoke to the fact that they do a lot of uh, traditional Chinese medicines as well as tinctures and things of that nature. They estimate that their cost each year would be over half a million dollars to maintain um, their NPNs. Again, very cost prohibitive. So when we talk about those things as an industry where you asked me when we were just starting, like, where do I think the industry is going? I think we're at a point right now that the industry really has to stand up um, really collectively. Don't leave it on the shoulders of a few. Um, and that's why even when I went to Ottawa and I'm like, why am I one of the, I'm literally the only woman right now here. And I started calling up other women and I stopped them at trade shows and I stopped men at trade shows. <laughs> just said, Hey, where are you? Where's your voice? Like, you know, and support uh, the Canadian health food association support each other um, support the retailers get the retailers involved and and you know every time I go out to a retail store I had a stack of postcards did you guys know about the save our supplements like mm -hmm. sign in the card will get your customers so it is very important because what will happen is if we don't say no what happens is Health Canada believes it's okay and that means that you and I and all the consumers who rely heavily on natural health products to support our bodies heal our bodies enhance our bodies will disappear so it is very important that people hear right now that you know number one we already have a leading class system in the world number two is that um 
the uh, site licensing, manufacturing of products in Canada is very high. Um, we already have very high standards on these and with the testing regulations. And then in addition to that, you can order products online from anywhere in the world and they don't contribute any taxes to Canada, not any taxes. So I can order from the United States, I can order from Europe, I can order from Asia, fully unregulated products, and mm. they're duty free if they're for personal use under a certain amount of money. But here I am, a Canadian manufacturer paying taxes, you know, employing staff, um, purchasing from manufacturing here, 100% of our manufacturing is done here in, in the lower mainland in British Columbia. So we're manufacturing everything. We third party test everything. We are hitting the top tier because for me, if I don't want to take that product, I'm not going to sell that product. I want to know it's 100% what I say it is. And that is the strength of Canadian marketplace products. Yet the government wants to add taxation on every single level that we've talked about, whether it's manufacturing costs, licensing costs, maintenance of your natural product license, your NPN, and um, even additional fees um, at the uh, at the store, uh, or excuse me, at the manufacturing site license. So right. literally, you just see this ding, 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 and that bill goes up on the cut on the companies, and it's going to bankrupt people or make them leave the marketplace. And then second to that, you're going to see that same thing happen at the till. That that the shelves deplete in the amount of products. And the other thing that will happen is um, it'll impact the store sales too. Um, so, you know, it is very important that people hear that. And yes, it is coming from a pharmaceutical level. They're saying that they need to put more safety measures um, on regulating health products in Canada. That does not make any sense. But I think we that's have... why I want to stop you for a second. I'll yeah. tell you why. Because when you talk about licensing, like let's say there's people, like we're well-versed in this. I mean, I, yeah. I bought the category. I was during the transition from a din to npn yeah, i remember doing perfect. it in the stores and i did all that stuff and yeah yeah i got all the process but one thing i don't think people understand is that because we do talk about the licensing and the fees and i know what will happen someone says licensing well shit you should be licensed why can't you be licensed you can't run amok i don't think people understand this is not the wild wild west in canada with natural supplements we have some of the highest regulations on the planet we have most countries in this world would rather buy from us than any other country, including our neighbor to the south, which is a shit show. And we'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by Field Agent Canada. Um, <laughs> we want to talk to you about their program called the Buy and Try program. Um, and it is, it's a, a pretty cool program because it allows you to get category feedback. Um, it allows you to get product product feedback and then retention feedback. Um, so what does that mean? So category feedback, um, you can see what um, you know field agent consumers are are buying um, on shelf. Um, and then when you encourage them, when you use buy and try, they purchase your product at a specified store and then they tell you about the feedback in the in-store experience. Um, then they take it home, they try the product, um, and they give you feedback about the product experience itself. So does it taste great? Uh, packaging, you know, do my kids love it? You know, those just, sort of well, things. Not just about the product on this one. So they'll actually even tell me how, where they found it in a store, how they Correct. found it in the Correct. Oh, wow. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And so, no, that's a little different than just the normal yeah. buy yeah. and try, right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Because now yeah. you're getting you're getting a shelf experience if you're trying to figure out what sections you want to be in. Did, you know, maybe all those sort of things. Did they, yeah. did they find it on yeah. shelf? It was hard to find, or you know, oh, wow. um, you know, um, or I I couldn't find it. And I asked the store, and the store oh, couldn't find it. it. Right, so it took me a long time to find it. Those sort of things, right? Interesting. Um, so then you get um, feedback when they get home. They open it. Was it hard to open? Did it? Did the box rip? You know, now I've got a hard time keeping it. Um, yeah. You know, and then does it taste good? Does it taste awful? This stuff's disgusting all of those things you get. Um, and then a sh the shopper will also tell you what their repurchase intention is. Like now that I've tried it, would I buy it again? Um, and then and then they actually share a repurchase for you when they actually buy it you know, again. So, so that- really, like, you, real Correct, correct, correct. But all of this cool. allows you to like a, a brand to figure out, you know, what is happening, you know, so uh, like a product like, like 
that you and I run, like OGB, right. we could put it through this and then people could tell us what we know already is that um, on our 300 gram bags, they hate well, the opening on the that. bag. <laughs> we don't talk about that, but, about um, that. But, but we hate the opening on the bags and we're sure consumers do too. Um, and one day we'll fix it, right? But, um, and then, but they love the product enough that they'll keep buying it on shelf despite right. the, the bad right. bag right. opening, which we also know is true, right? But um, all of these things you could find out as you're building product or iterating right. on products. So well, that, we think um, those are true and you may find out that nobody does care. It's only about the only opening bugs me and you. That's true. And that maybe true. the product's okay that way. Yeah. That is or maybe true. the product's too sweet or yeah. maybe not sweet enough. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, it's one thing to ask all your friends, did you try it? Yes, I love it. And then would you buy it again? Yes, I would, except you don't see any purchases come back right. again. Well, nah, because they're not going to be that. This honest. is a, uh, <laughs> but this is a, a real consumer who will actually really like that. Uh, repurchase. And then when they do repurchase, you'll actually see them come back. So then now you've got a sense on yeah, yeah. possibly turns or continuity, right? Like things like that that are kind of- I like that because I think the insights you can pull on that. I mean, then you can pull uh, different placement um, insights, promotion insights, pricing insights, et cetera. You know, it's no wonder the field agent is 12 years old and probably going to make it to 100 because that's a pretty cool- um, that's a pretty cool. We, cool we'd story. like to be clear. Jeff Doucette is not 12 years old. Jeff Doucette might not be 12 years old, <laughs> but he is not 12 years old. But, but field agent is 12 years old. And happy birthday, field agent. Happy That's birthday, pretty impressive. Field That's field good age. job on you and the team. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it, you guys offer a really cool service uh, for brands out there. Even if you do act like 12, that's really got nothing to do with the, the, with the, with the commercial here. <laughs> and now back to the podcast. Right. So I, I want to make sure that, that, that you really sort of not impressed, like because I'm telling you to, but I don't think people understand that we're not unlicensed. We're not unregulated. Yeah. And this isn't being a baby because now we finally have to line up and do things properly. Now there's rules in play. Yeah. These rules are they're already in play. Yeah, and, I think, and I think that's the message yeah. that's getting mucked up. And I'm happy that you and Aaron and all them really went after that side of it as well, because you're spinning bullshit then because this yeah. isn't what it is. So I Not just want to make all. sure that maybe you can help walk us through a little bit of that. So they understand that you weren't the wild, wild west three weeks ago before <laughs> all these changes might've been coming. You had a thousand things to do. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, when we talk about regulations and, you know, I don't want to jump too far down. There's um, uh, the rabbit hole, but I do want it to be understood. Like Canada is considered as one of the top in the world. And when I say top, I mean like literally Australia and Canada right. are considered at the top. Uh, and you're talking like, you know, uh, incredible um, amount of regulatory already for a very small population when you consider like the, the population of Canada versus when you look at the footprint of a, the largest market in the U.S. Um, that's why to give you an idea, and I talk about this with the United States retailers, and they're kind of just like, what? Like you guys do all that? So for me to apply for one of those products that we currently sell, um, basically you have to go through an application. You have to provide scientific literature. Um, and showcasing why you're putting those products together, the impact it has on the body, if there's any implications. So there's already, a, like, well, these are working, I'm working with PhDs. They're not, hey, I just, you know, I it's had this idea last night. Yeah, it's room. like I, I had this idea <laughs> last night. I'm just gonna throw it in a capsule and see what happens. You know, let's see if someone buys that. That that, but I could do that in a lot of the countries in the world, including Absolutely. the United States, including the neighbor to the south, yeah. where exactly. you're buying for all yeah. you folks buying off mm -hmm. Amazon and all these other sites. Yeah. You don't know what the hell you're buying you, to a large and degree. That's, 100% Kenny and that's the thing that people I don't think recognize is there's so much behind the scenes work that has to be done so when you come up with a product and I, I will use our power iron plus organic spirulina as, as an example because when we first applied for that it was actually came back and asked we had the literature it's one of the highest levels of iron in the marketplace um, so we've had a high level of vitamin B B you know bullet acid why would you do that well because we wanted to ensure that it would work with the body so we had to show all the scientific literature to why right. we did that and what came back from health canada is but we don't understand why you put spirulina in there 
potentially the one thing that shouldn't be questioned became a big question mark. Um, and so we actually had to go through showing the literature that, you know, there's clinical studies that so show that spirulina, even in small doses, actually enhances absorption. Mm -hmm. So again, we're working with a regulatory body, um, showing them the literature, providing it, and, and, and this process going through it and showing all how effective it is. And then, okay, yes, now we understand and but at least they're that, asking, right? So it's even to the health candidates, but in defense of that, that's a legit question. And they're asking questions that someone should be asking. And most countries don't ask. They add a bunch no, of bullshit that doesn't mean anything. Where they're exactly. saying, listen, why'd you do that? You put spirulina. What, what does that hurt you? Does that cause anything? And you exactly. have to come back and now say, no, this yeah. is why this is what it does. To me, that's great. That's what we should be doing. Yay team. And that's yay, and that's why I say that is not done. And that's why I said going through that process, that's over when someone, you know, that was over a year's process. Um, and that's us working with PhDs, manufacturing, and so forth, showing that value. Now, if I had gone to the US, I could just go and say to a manufacturer, build this product for right. me. And I would just send in a notification online saying this is what the product is and mm -hmm. it's yeah. called an FDA notification. So I could be selling that with within literally a, a couple of days, whatever it takes for that manufacturer to get it up and going. And who knows what the quality of that yeah. versus when we bring it into mm -hmm. site licensed Canadian manufacturers, you know, again, they're hitting the top standards in terms of testing for everything from E. coli and, you know, are, are they within the parameters of mercury? or or whatever that is like we have full um, certificate of analysis on first the raw ingredients that are fully tested then we produce the product and then we do another third party testing right. of the finished product that is not required in other countries in the world and i'll give you an example is japan actually will you have to if you want to sell your product in japan you have to go through a whole registration and regulatory process okay that can take again uh, six months to a year time the japanese government recognizes the level of the npns the canadian health system that you basically just have to provide them notification that you're selling in the market that means you have governments that trust our, our system, system our products more than any other place so again we need to look from a, a lens of why is this happening when even countries that have such high regulations like a japan recognizes how high our standards already are in canada no one has asked for these changes um and not consumers, not industry. Industry has, you know, not gone forward saying, hey, how do we do this? And there's really not been a lot of information to provide it um, to why these would come in, but they will be very detrimental to the industry and they will be detrimental to the consumer because it will take away um, uh, access to product. Well, you're going to just basically have a lot of, um, I guess, single letter um not compounded uh probably i mean you'll get calcium you may not get calcium with a bunch of other cool things because the absorption rate goes up if this is added that's added because i'm going to yeah. spend a quarter million dollars for what to tell you yeah. what we already knew and we were already did all the work and now you want to charge me a, a, an amount for yeah i don't know for some reason i guess i i, I don't know how this is going to benefit the coffers of the government it's you well, know what's and, funny is I I think to to like I I think that they have not like the government hasn't explained the risk very well to the regular. Not sure they understand what they're because, doing. Because I I said this to friends right, and I had a, a a bunch of friends that you know I've known a long time right, and a couple of them are like, come on dude, like you know I don't care. Like, are you talking about like? The uncle that you know that owns like a Chinese herb shop somewhere. I'm like, no, dude, we're we're not. This is not what we're. I'm not talking about something you might buy that you can't pronounce that you boil into a tea. Mm -hmm. This is not what we're talking about. Like all of the stuff that you like. I literally went over and like, okay, show me what's in your your cabinets, right? Your medicine. Yeah. And then I started pulling stuff out, going, all of these are going to go away because these guys, literally, these guys, they've said they can't afford it. They can't do these it. These guys can't afford it. These mm -hmm. guys can't afford yeah. it. These guys can't yeah. afford it. And he was like, but we yeah. use these. And I'm like, okay, so put your signature down. <laughs> yeah. Start call like, it's almost, you know, it, it just. Because I think what happens, it gets spun is yeah. that you're just, you know what? Cheryl's just whiny. 
She's mm-hmm. another business person. They're making obscene money anyway, and they just don't want to follow the regulations. Listen, and they're all pissed off at licensing. Minutes. I don't think you should say that about Cheryl at all. That's, that's not right. <laughs> but that's what that's what that's the spin that comes yeah, back. Yeah. And then you're thinking, yeah. come on, man. Like we yeah. do, we we do all this shit. You're 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 yeah. imposing you're imposing rules that just make no sense. And you're not even listening now when people are being invalid. And because nobody in the industry, you correct me if I'm wrong, nobody has said they don't want the regulations. Well, and that's the thing is we've lived through the regulations, and I'd like to say I'd love to say I'm making obscene amounts of money, but that's not the reality. No, it's not. Uh, you know, but uh, we, you know, and that's why I say it's a it's a fight and a struggle. Um, in CPG, it's you know most companies disappear after one or two. So when you're still standing after years and you're still trying to expand and and grow and provide, uh, you know, make it through like the conditions we've had in the last couple of years, you know, to have the government come out the side door and like whap you with another change of regulations it's yeah, like late friday how, afternoon right yeah it's like we're gonna do can you know consumer feedback during the summer while no one's aware that it's happening like these things just they they don't add up and um you know it's it's uh it will impact the industry. It will impact innovation. Um, and it's actually just like you were saying, Phil, when you were showing your friends, it's kind of like I was talking to um, one of the MPs, uh, member of parliament's office. And mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, we had like some people already come and talk with us. And then as I was talking with them, they said, oh, wow, I never even thought about it. Like when you talked about the the COVID, like what happened with our family taking on zinc. and Everybody. Like, everyone did, right? We And that's the thing is even here in BC, like I think we were one of the highest, uh, you know, rates of people who conformed and did the 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 vaccines and even the mm-hmm. follow-up vaccines and the boosters. And But we still all were looking for, hey, I need extra vitamin C, zinc, elderberry, you know, all of these adaptogens. What else can I be taking? Yeah. Like, if it's so immuno- many boosting i'm in right like exactly, exactly. And it's not it's as like, long as it contradicts anything i'm taking which for the most part it doesn't and if yeah. it does it's documented and that's and it's all Come documented on. and on top of it it's all very safe and it's kind of it's just a very unusual space that we're standing in right now because again from a business side like we've talked about my background you know growing up in natural health and so forth but you know I actually worked for one of two a couple of the largest um, groups in Canada so including Best Buy Canada's you know Best Buy US um, as my CPG background you know there's there's costs on everything and um, you know this this industry it's it's just it, it's become overregulated, and and it makes it very challenging for people to, um, to, to really provide the products. It's competitive, um, and and the margins are shrinking on us. Um, we're trying to hold them back. Uh, there's there's so many things that are happening, and you know when you look at you know, larger companies, you know, and I, that's why I said, it's not coming from a small company perspective because I've worked in large companies as well. And I can see the perspective of both sides, but like, you know, Clorox, Clorox company, Clorox bleach is what most people know it. They Mm -hmm. own several lines of vitamins in Canada and they stood there as, you know, a big player on the Hill. And one of the things that they said is, you know, at the end of the day, it's only a percentage of our sales. Do we go through all of this? What's, what's, or do why, we just, do the, why do the work? Or do we just pull out, pull out? of the con- pull out of the country? Right. So you've got the smallest people that say, "I don't know that I can exist," and then you've got the biggest players saying, "Like eh, it's a per- it's, it might not be it's worth a, it. It, is it worth it for us to change all of right. our labels? We haven't even talked about label changes. It's, oh, that's, an, that's, don't what, let this, that's another. Yeah, yeah I'm like it's that's a, a whole other. That's why I said bah. we won't we won't get into that, and that's why I said. But I mean, that's part of the thing is like you're talking the smallest to the largest you're talking you know I one of the retailers sent me a fantastic note um, just out of my out of office I'm in Parliament Hill speaking on behalf of it and they're like go fight for us Cheryl like we need just we our shelves will be cleared our yeah. businesses will be shut down so it is important because people are using these they are safe there is regulations the regulations were hard fought for um, the the transition to natural product numbers did not happen like in a couple of months that no. lasted over years you're talking over mm-hmm. a seven year Jesus. process Mm-hmm. and the industry is saying oh it'll only take a couple of months or the government did but it didn't it was like that seven was years 
it was a nightmare. You look nightmare. at the opportunity CBDs. Like if you yeah. rewound like five years ago, the excitement in the marketplace, what would CBDs do for the marketplace? And instead the government wrapped that in so much red tape that even my friends, their moms are like, oh, Cheryl, would you, would you walk me into one of those shops so I can try that CBD? And it's like, you, you again, you've alienated the customer. The exactly. government's not listening and they need to start hearing what the Canadian customers are saying. And that is that they trust the products they're sold in leading natural health retailers. Um, this has been very well regarded. We've done a great job in regulatory. Even if I was paying a fee of $56,000 for a product license, right now it's almost a, it's a, over 210 days to get that license. Right. Paying $56,000 it's still a 210 plus day process. So am I paying someone's salary for a year to look at my I don't know what application? <laughs> what am I paying for? Oh, yeah, um, for? So that's why I say, yes, you're taking away a huge tax base. You're taking away natural products from people and it just doesn't make sense. And that's why I say I, I'm very proud to add my voice to save our supplements. I think the Canadian Health Food Association has been doing an incredible Remarkable. job and yeah. they, uh, you know, and that, and that's, where everyone should really be standing up right now and supporting um, the industry and adding their voices. And that includes customers. I know like a lot of the people listening to this podcast, um, we're going into a lot of details around Save Our Supplements today. But I think it's important because at the end of the day, if you go to Save Our Supplements website, I think it's saveoursupplements.ca, um, or you go to the Canadian Health Food Association's website, you can click on the link, send an email to your member of parliament, because every time they get an email or they get get a postcard, you can get a lot of those at the natural health food stores. Um, they're going to say why we keep hearing this. And that's, yeah. you know, that was just in the newspapers, like yeah. 300,000 plus uh, things, right? Exactly. And there's like, we've never had this kind of right. feedback. Well, yeah, they have in the past and it was around natural health products. So right. it's time for them to say, listen, you know, this is, this is actually very important to Canadians. It's important to our health. And it's actually a huge part of our economy. Um, it's preventative health. It takes pressure off our net, our healthcare hospitals, system, doctors, hospitals. You know, we had a, someone asked me what drives you when you're in your lowest moments, uh, because running a CPG and is very hard. Like it's, it's so hard and no one ever understands that. I'm like, no. you're so lucky you run your own business. I'm like, no, no I'm not. Are you crazy? I'm not. No. <laughs> Are I am not, but no. thank you. No. Um, you know, and uh, that's why I said like you, um, you get from time to time this amazing feedback. And one day I came into work and there was an email and it said, your product literally saved my life. And uh, I opened up this email and it was actually a lady who lives in Langley, British Columbia. And uh, she wrote this incredible email. Um, she's like, you know, I, I'm, I needed to send you a note to say thank you for what you do. And she expressed her journey about how she had been iron deficient for almost 20 years of her life. Um, she was, uh, uh, she's a kindergarten teacher, uh, a grandmother, and um, she was called at work and told to immediately go to a hospital to get iron transfusions um, because she was um, on the ability of death. Uh, and so that's what she did. Uh, and then they couldn't, they couldn't that's get her crazy. iron insane and these are the things that canadians are going through and they have a huge pull on our medical system and i and again i don't think health canada thinks about it because supplements can step in and fill those roles um and that's you know she she told me um in her email and we spoke on the phone after and met in person and so forth um and she actually has a video testimonial on our website as well but she even went to saint paul's hospital to a leading uh gi specialist because they believe she had to have internal internal bleeding. Um, and that was what was wrong with her iron levels. And so she uh, went through all of this, uh, went into the operating room, uh, like in everything. And they said to her, you know what, unfortunately, Jeannie, your body just doesn't absorb iron, you're going to be for the rest of your life on iron transfusions, blood transfusions. Yeah. And that's telling that to a woman who's in her early 50s. Um, and she's already struggled for 20 years where she's losing her hair, she has zero energy, she's, oh. she's not living a full life. Because and this is what she's being told. And I go back to my why, what did I start with is, don't just fall into the trap of this is the medical like, 
you know, bring other things in. And I saw that with my own family health story mm -hmm. of when we incorporated listening to the opportunity of medical and natural you can have great results. You can have great results on natural. But, results. Yeah. And Jeannie went into a natural health food store and she said she had her arms loaded up with all these iron supplements and a staff member came over to her and said, you know, what's going on? So she explained her story and, and they said to her, you know what, you need to take this product. And she handed her the Vitality Power Iron and she said she took just one a day. She's like, this is not going to work, but I'll, I'll follow through. And um, within a month, uh, her iron levels had gone up. And then by month two, her iron levels had gone up again. And by month three, her iron levels were normal. Her first time in 20 years. And why is that? Because we, when we built that product, it was around how is the body working? Why is it not working? Why are iron products not working for people? And so again, that goes back to looking at the literature, looking at the science, like figuring out how do these products work? How do they work with the body? And then working with retailers and the natural health retailers, people don't talk about this enough either in Canada. We have some of the, such an educated staff in these natural health food stores. Yeah. I, and I, and it's almost one of the things that's missed. And the thing that I'm most passionate about is there's certain stores in Canada that it's primarily staff are natural paths. You know, they're, they're, right. um, they're nutritionists. They're people who are passionate about health and, you know, even their food science and, and they go and work in the health food stores because they're studying this in university and their naturopathic degrees and so forth and they're learning and they're applying and they're looking at the products and so you also have this incredible skill set within natural health food stores where people are trained to actually listen to people they are very empathetic and they're like me what drives you I help change someone's health today like I really help someone and that's also something that gets lost in this conversation when we go to dollars and cents is there's a reason people are going into the natural health food stores because they're looking for solutions and a lot of people can't pay to go to their own personal naturopath or right. so forth and they they learn about products or they go and get that knowledge and I also am amazed by how many stores and I think it's brilliant are starting to incorporate you know um, a room for a nutritionist that right. can come in or mm -hmm. even their floor staff mm -hmm. will have customers. Great. Because people are getting that advice and support. And then you've got all these fantastic products around you to support your health. So that's why I say we don't want to fall backwards. You don't want to um, to lose what we have. You know, in the US, one of the big scandals was sawdust in products. Like in leading that, leading, leading uh, companies. Um, and you'd, we've never had that in Canada. Like when have we ever heard that story? So we do have a lot of, um, value in our products. And I believe the people, a lot of the people behind, especially the independent brands, um, they really should be supported. They come in with passion. Um, and they're really the ones who are standing with the industry saying like, mm -hmm. you know, everyone get involved. It's, so um, put you on the spot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, go, no. go, go. I was going to say, where's this going? What happens? Yeah. What do, you, do we think, do we win this? Because it is a win-lose on this one. I hate to tell people. I really believe it is a win-lose. If this goes through, it's it's going to be a loss. Yeah. I, I mean, where will it go? I'm an optimist, but a realist. I've always said that on everything that I do. Um, in terms of it, I am I am optimistic that we've we've made headwinds. Um, you know, I think so. I think politically, I, because now the opposition party, like I'm in Don Davies riding, right? Yeah. And whether I vote NDP or not, I so I'll let people know. Like quite frankly, I've always mm -hmm. voted probably center, center right. Mm -hmm. But I'll 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 vote for Davies again. I say to people, I'm it. he is passionate. I've met with Don several he's times now. It, and he's yeah. thinking about it and he understands yeah. that the implications of it. And so then the NDP really need to get on board because they actually supported through this um, to get where we are. So, and I don't know if they fully understood that. I don't, I don't think know they understand the, it. I don't think the liberals, some of them even fully understood it because I've also met with liberals that are very against what's occurring. So, you know, and I've, you know, sat with um, Elizabeth May um, a couple of times now in parliament. Yeah. So we've got the Greens, you've got the NDP health critic. Um, I also met Pierre Polyev here yeah. in Richmond a couple weeks ago and you know mm -hmm. it's just a handshake and a go and it was like you know thanks for what you're doing because and I told him exactly that if you know I wouldn't be standing here um, and he asked Aaron and I to do a, a video with him to explain like these two groups you know what what would this do to their companies and and would they even even be 
uh, would people like them ever be able to come into this? No, the answer, no. no. You're, and they used to call it the brain drain. I, I, you know, back in the day, the the tech, all the tech people going to yeah. the U.S. Yeah. You're going to have the same thing start to happen in CPG. Uh, you're going to have the the drain of companies into other markets and leaving Canada, and that would be a huge, huge error. Sure, they're doing it um, now in other categories. They're doing exactly. it in food. And because I tell, keep telling people, listen, they they start screwing around these foods next. They're yeah. talking about tinkering with the organic rules. They're talking about tinkering with other things. We're just getting a lot, a bunch of large, large, large companies that don't really give a shit about any of us. No, they don't. Right? And, 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 and a... it's going to change legislation and it's going to be detrimental. All the cool shit's going to go. Do you think, like, so the guy that's in charge right now, you know, the, the marijuana stuff that's out there that is kind of a debacle, right? Like he did a... We had high hopes and we were probably all a little naive, right? That was just folks. Kind of when we thought, ah, all you got to do, you know, this first step, we we understand it's necessary, but where we want to get to is the next set of legislation, right? The stuff around pain, the stuff that you can use for therapeutic use. And we never got there because now we realize it was only after votes, right? Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if, I think the optimist in me hopes that right now, this is enough pain. I'm hoping to we've added for yeah. him to go. I need Shit. To, you know, I'm going to lose on this. No, yeah. I, I thought this was a no brainer. I'm going to come in and tell people these are a bunch of cowboys. We're going to put some rules in place and get everything better. And maybe like, hopefully what it's done is, is you and, and the work you're doing and Aaron and CHFA and all these folks is it's, it's pain. I can tell you like, so in I, in my writing, it's weird because this podcast we've never really made it political, but but it's political yeah. now because it has, it really has, it has right? to be. It, it, it has to it, be. Well, it's hit really close to home. Like so, I've said I've sent uh, Peter Fonseca probably somewhere to the close close to like a dozen emails. Right, never gotten mm. a single response. You know, I've called him out on LinkedIn. I've called him out on social media. On the podcast, you know, the podcast. Uh -huh. Like if I run into the guy in the street, like. Dude, I voted for you. I'm never voting for you again. I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't care who else comes in on the other side, right? Like, well, that's what I, you know, it's kind of funny you know? because I agree with you. It is political and yeah. it's unfortunate. I kind of, you know, right now I say I'm a Canadian without a, a political party. I've, I've like, always well, I think kind there of, a lot of us are sitting in I that know. Boat. I'm like, and I mean, that's for other reasons right too, now. but yeah. right now, you know, I, I, I would say that the most important thing and government listens under fear. Yes. Um, and so when you have this amount of um, feedback, um, the government has to listen. And so there has been some listening. I remember, you know, if you uh, CHFA, you couldn't even get a, a meeting with health Canada. You know, I was at a street festival here in Vancouver and I walked up to our premier uh, David Eby and I said to him, what are you going to do about this? You know um, I've, you know, called like, like I said, I've spoken to almost every of uh, the, the most senior of senior politicians um, at this point and said, you know, what are you going to do? Like, you, because you have to, and that's the optimist. If you, if you look to the negative side and say you can't stop or change government, then you stay silent and you figure out what's your plan B. And so, so many people keep saying, Cheryl, what's your plan B? My plan A is that I'm using my voice. I'm using the influence that I have and continuing to build it. Um, to say and say like why hold back like this is my livelihood this is the yeah. ability for people yeah. like Jeannie who sent me her testimonial to be out she said to me you know in that email years ago please never stop selling this product well it won't be a market condition other than the government's decision right. that's not right and you know companies have so many other challenges against them you know I'm right. sure you know we never talk about I always say it's the most unsexy part of CPG is inventory but to carry, you have to carry four to six months of vitamins and supplements for the manufacturing lead time. Like you're literally crushing down on costs um, on people. And that's why I say it's not in the business plan of people. It's not in um, how we will bring new innovation to the marketplace. And at the end of the day, this is bureaucratic. The reason for it is we want more bureaucratic positions at Health Canada funded through the natural health category which has one of the lowest impacts on the government we don't 
provide any type of funding towards people who are taking natural health products that's coming out of their personal money. Um, the pharmaceuticals, there's a rebate on that. The health everything. system, everything, 100%. you know, you know, Which makes here, you wonder uh, sometimes why, why things happen. Yeah. Like why yeah. all of a sudden this is a big deal. Yeah. So we have to, to look at people, it. The people. Yeah. And, you know, and again, the basics of government say you have to do things like what's the financial impact? Why are we putting through regulations when they never did a financial impact on the industry um, exactly. for consumers? Yet they're trying to push this through really hard and fast. Um, so the government needs to back up. We have an election coming. Um, I think it's fantastic that people like Don Davies and Pierre Polyev and Elizabeth May have all said, no, this isn't right. And even liberals um, have said, you know, this right. isn't this isn't right. And I didn't know about it. So why are we bringing this in um, and, and doing this to an industry that has the ability to thrive? Canada's a world leader. Why are we trying to crush down a world leading industry in Canada when the government should be focused in Health Canada could easily say, you know what, let's support our Canadian industry and look at all of these natural products and products that are coming through the mail mm -hmm. um, with zero regulation mm -hmm. and zero mm -hmm. tax to me, base to I'm support. With you on that. Yeah, that's that's much more. That's yeah. killing us. Oh, 100 percent. This Kenny, industry and, is not killing us. This industry no. is regulated, folks. Let's get that clear. Oh, 100 percent. It's and not that's, snake oil shit. I mean, no. you may not like it. You don't have to take it. It's not a big deal. It's your choice. But they're yeah. making it their choice and you are not going to have a choice and you're going to yeah. get stuck with bringing all the shit from the states that is not regulated it's a different system the fda has to go prove them wrong in canada it's set up that you have to do the due diligence you have to show canada you're safe yeah. then you get out there and the states is the opposite i don't want that yeah, crap in my country well, and that's, that's why you go back to, you want to look at the why and then who, the why yeah, and the who. I, and I so, the, yeah, <laughs> and that's why I say the, the health directorate needs to be accountable to that. I and agree. that's what's happening right now. So, you know, I think that that's really important. You know, I, one of the other business owners, he's very well known in the industry said to me, um, in November, you know, you know, you're a powerhouse. Why have you been such a wallflower? And uh, sometimes you need to have something that really well, sparks you. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. we never met, but I'm like, you know, I'm I'm here and I'm I'm That's wanting all. to make sure that people are hearing the message. Awesome. If you're someone who stands back, um, do not. Um, if you've ever taken a supplement or believe there's value, or you know, just walk into the natural health food stores and see how many people are passionate, then yeah. you should be really wanting to make sure that the industry stands and no one's have ever said that you know the regulations we agree with it we all follow the process of applications and providing scientific literature you know we provided uh, one of our products is uh, vitality's glows collagen and rose and we actually pulled from chinese pharmacopoeia because again we're putting another natural product yeah. rose with another product collagen yet again we had to explain why doing that so no other country is doing that canada is we have the top in regulations and like i said um you know there's already a business cost when you're doing all of that because there's a wait time there's a production time and um you know we we pay a lot towards taxes um employment taxes and and uh, you know our, our sales taxes and everything else so you know I, I, if anyone is and I this is a CPG show so I would really hope that most people listening in commerce are yeah. aware like Canada and if they didn't know they should know um, this is something that uh, you should feel passionate and strong about I agree um, Cheryl we've run out of time yeah of course Thank I've you. never talked to regulations so much except for on Parliament Hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Normally, hopefully, you know what? Yeah. Hopefully people will listen, right? I mean, and I, so. I, I would love to, um, maybe sooner than later, is maybe to bring you back. We, we, we spent a little bit of time on Vitality and a whole lot on regulation, but I think... Yeah. I want I to hear the other story, story, too. Yeah. But, but I also think but. that I think your story will help people understand, because... because you know exactly what we talked about right people go oh you know like of course it needs to be really you and then but i think when we we look at you know you you started down this path so i think if we bring you back sooner than later what people will start to realize is no no what what you're building a vitality what you're defending 
you know, for vitality is something that we actually all need, right? Mm -hmm. You know, whether we're all entirely aware of your product or not, or the way it's built, we need it. Um, and we can't afford to have someone like Cheryl go away. I exactly. think that's the point of this whole thing, right? Exactly. Is we're doing something that we just, you know, to be totally crass, we don't give a fuck, right? Like, yeah. you know, you're you're going to go, you know, the way the government's gone about this is we don't give a fuck. Like, as, you know, it's just a regulation. It's just a nameless corp, right? No, it's not, right? Like, yeah. we're not talking about the proctors, the, the J&Js of the world, the, you know, the, you know, anyway. Yeah, no, I 100% um, agree. I'd love to be back on with you guys yeah. and, and chat uh, chat further. But like yeah. I said, I, I think it's fantastic that you're adding to the voice, which is exactly what we, we wanted to, to do. Exactly. Is the more people hear, the more people learn and understand. And yeah. that's why I said the, you know, my my email and voice uh, LinkedIn is open to anyone who wants to connect and ask questions. But go to the like I said, there's so much information yeah. right now on um, the Canadian Health Food Association's website. They provide updates, um, so it's a really really worth uh, investing the time. And if there's other um, you know health food stores who are listening to this or manufacturers or Brands, whoever whatever. you are brands stand up, up man. and Step you up. need to do yeah. not leave it on the few it yeah. we need as many voices as many of your staff as many of your customers Agreed. and say hey that just stop this and and i think that if there was you know you said what's the the i don't have the crystal ball for the future but i i always have believed that you know when you have an engaged group i know that's that old saying like it always starts with a small group that makes the change and so you know if you have that tribe the leaders that show you how to go about it and add your voice. I hope, you know, again, a smaller group within the, the larger industry here, we've been able to add our voice and bring impact. And I know that every person listening, if you make that decision to say, you know what, I'm adding my voice in, I do care. And we need to stand up and say that's, yeah. that's, you know, we, we really believe in our industry. We believe in our products. Yeah. And I personally take them. I want to make sure that yeah. they're there for, for everyone. That's really important. Yeah. And I think we actually got a good chance at, at, at fixing this. I, I, think I think people so. are real different. I think the fight has really dug it. And th maybe thank God in a lot of ways it did became very political. Because yeah. Well, when, it's a the, very when, good when it comes down to the votes, it makes a difference. And there's a lot yeah. of Canadians I just don't think really understand this. And again, yeah. vote, whatever you want to do, you do. But at least go in knowledgeable. At least understand mm -hmm. the implications. And again, you pick the side. I, I mean, I'd rather you pick this side because I don't. I think this is wrong. But at least go in knowledgeable. Go in with facts. So go in with facts. Go in with leaving options for those who believe absolutely. in it. That's, That's the a, why take away when there's so much opportunity. Exactly there, for sure. So Cheryl, thank Great. you. Well, honestly, thank you Thanks, very very much for coming on. We'll have you Thanks. back on because we we'll, actually we'll, want to. We'll, I don't we'll know, know, no label it. talk. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no label. I don't want to talk about labels. <laughs> no even label when talk. I, even when they gave me the label, I'm no. like, I'm putting this in my back pocket. I'll talk about save our supplements, yeah, but no yeah, label yeah. talk. No I'm label like, talk. no, thank you, no, thank you. No, <laughs> <good>. Anyways, okay. <laughs> and yeah, we'll talk soon. And Phil, I'm still going to be the one who comes and sneaks up yes. behind you. <laughs> do it, do it. I love it. I love it. That's good. Color my hair before that. Yeah, you got to fix it all. You got to figure out what you're going to do. Can you pick me out in the crowd? So I love it. I love it. It's, uh, Thanks so much. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Take Have care. Nice <laughs> bye. I'll stick around. Okay. Bye. We gotta go. We gotta go. We got we got another call. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. See you on the next one.